Commissioner Antonio Towns. Present. Commissioner Vernita Martin. Present. Okay. So there are three of us on the line, so that constitutes a quorum. So we will get started. The first item on the agenda for this evening is our petitioner, um, Terrico Incorporated and MG Group, um, to request to obtain provision to approve a special use permit for automotive service station and hotel use under Industrial District I and subdivide the set property and to approve a site plan. At this time, um, if our court reporter, um, I'm sorry, if our court reporter could um, swear in the um, petitioners that will be speaking tonight, I'm, I'm assuming we can do them all at one time. And Commissioner Sharice Williams is trying to get in. She needs the link. Got it. I'll take care of it. Uh, Bernita, just when she does get in here, please note for the record that she uh, joined. Okay, thank you. She's on, she's on, she's on. I'm sorry, I do apologize. Could you text that to her as well, um, Ms. Jenkins, so she can get it? And she's on the line so she can hear. So the court reporter, if you can begin to swear in the petitioners. You guys can all raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give in this cause be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. I do. Okay, great. With that said, um, if you can begin. Sure. Hi, um, my name is uh, Dan Wander. Um, I am a principal at uh, Terraco Inc. We are the co-developer uh, on this project along with uh, Kalpesh Patel from the OM group. Um, before we get started and I do the rest of the remainder of the introductions, just wanted to let you know that pursuant to all of the um, plan request, no, excuse me, plan commission requirements for the village of, uh, of University Park, we've done all the proper notices, um, including, including a sign on the property, um, noticing all the uh, property owners within uh, 250 feet. Um, we've also supplied an affidavit of our notice requirements from one of my attorneys, um, Vlado, and, um, in, and um, all of the uh, certificates that are necessary for, um, for this hearing this afternoon. And uh, Dan, can you uh, provide us with a uh, business address for the record, please? Um, business address for Terraco is Terraco Inc. Um, we're the agent for the uh, petitioner, which I believe I think it was Gendel Partners, um, Gendel Realty Partners, um, Inc. And we are at 3201 Old Glenview Road, um, Suite 300. That's in Wilmette, Illinois, 60091. Thank you. And then anyone who, uh, anyone who will be speaking when you start to speak, please introduce yourself, um, first and last name, and then a business address for the record, please. So. so, you know, before we sort of, you know, begin, we're extremely um, um, excited and energetic um, about uh, doing this new project um, in University Park. Um, I have, along with my team um, this afternoon, I have my architect, Chris Stark, from um, the WT Group. Um, I have Luwe Abuna, who is my traffic engineer. Um, Jim Frain, who is my, um, who is my uh, civil engineer, along with my legal team of Jim Fiselli, um, Tiffany Nelson, and Vlado, Vlado, forgive me, I can't pronounce your last name, Brandis. Brandis. 
Bridges. Thank you. Um, and um, I've got a uh, PowerPoint um, presentation. Um, I think I can share my screen here. Hold on. Um, is this the one I want to use? Yeah, this one right here. So um, let's see. You guys see the PowerPoint on the screen at this point? I'm not that adept to PowerPoint. Yes. Right? Yes, I can see it. You can see it? Okay. Yes. So this is a, um, a brief outline of what we're going to be doing um, the, um, this afternoon here. Um, and as I said, we've got um, introduction of our, uh, of our team members um, and then some more specific information about the site, which my um, engineer and architect will help me go over. Um, some of the impact, um, positive impact for the, um, for the village um, that we have for everybody here, um, and then the opportunity um, for question and answer from the Planning Commission or any of the uh, staff from uh, the park. Um, as I sort of stated earlier, we've been working with, um, with the village for about the last six months or so trying to come up with a plan that we believe would be appropriate um, for this for this um, for this development. Um, so by way of quick introduction, um, as co-developer here, um, I'm one of the principals of Terraco Inc. We've um, been a developer in the Chicago market for the last 35 years. We've done 100 plus commercial projects, many of which are very similar to the one that we're doing here. We're proposing here in University Park. Um, we've worked with all the major retailers, um, Walmart and Target, and um, done many food stores, um, you know, including Mariano's and Jewel. So we're very adept at these kinds of transactions, including doing a lot of work with service stations. Um, this is just a little bit of a snapshot on several of the projects that we like just to showcase with everybody here for a minute. We did this Trader Joe's was in Evanston. The Walgreens was in Skokie, Illinois. Um, we did a mixed use development again in Skokie with a Portillo's restaurant um, and some mixed use projects in the, in the rear, drive through Starbucks and Holland Park. Um, the Jewel Food Store was the first Jewel Food Store um, done in the Woodlawn Market at 61st and Cottage. Um, we completed that a couple of years ago. We also did a mixed use project in Logan Square, uh, anchored with a uh, target, a smaller target and 220 um, apartment units. Um, the um, the um, group that we're partners with here is the OM group. They're a second generation um, family business started by Danny Patel, the main principles now of which um, are Kapesh and Amit Patel. Um, they've been doing this for about the last 15 years. Um, they've gotten, they've done over 70 gas stations in 14 states with, um, with all the major brands, including Shell, BP, Sunoco, Mobile. Um, they're also a leader in the quick serve restaurant industry um, with, um, again, over 60 different unique locations with Dunkin' Donuts, Dairy Queen, Wingstop, Rosati's Pizza, um, just to name a couple. Um, this is a, kind of a little bit of a snapshot of some of the different people that they've, um, that they've had as their brand partners. Um, I'd say that um, one of the things that we really want to get to here, um, you know, is our overall sort of project vision for this. You know, we're, we're under contract to buy the northeast corner um, of Stuckel and Central. Um, and it's going to be a full service travel center when we get this whole thing built out. Um, the travel center will include, you know, sea store, interior restaurants, showers, truck lounge, gas and diesel, truck repair, truck wash, parking, um, a hotel, and several other um, quick serve restaurants. Um, we believe that in terms of the public convenience, given the explosion really of commercial development 
and industrial development in the village of, um, of University Park, that this will really service um, the community and allow it to be able to you know, achieve a lot of different economic um, development. And with myself, um, the Terraco team and the OM group, um, we're well positioned to be able to carry this forward and make this a first class um, development um, project. So um, before we get into the site plan itself, as I just described, you know, this is the location of the property. Um, you know, close to where the new Amazon is, and D DSC Logistics, Georgia Pacific, you know, just east of the new interchange at 57th um, and Stuckel uh, Avenue, um, you, know, this, you know, in Will County uh, in University Park. Um, as you can see, the property, you know, lays out extremely well. Um, you know, it's got great um, sight lines and so forth. For the um, for the uh, travel center that we're going to be doing, uh, we're going to propose a um, large sign here that will be visible from the highway, which will also help us attract, um, you know, different patrons to uh, to the travel center. Um, this is the uh, another look at the center, um, looking um, south southwest um, at the location. And then this just sort of frames the property um, in terms of in terms of where it situates right off of the you know new four way interchange at 57 and uh, Stuco. Um, now I've got my site plan. Um, Chris, if you want to walk us through kind of the site plan and the elevations in terms of what we are proposing. Um, you know, for the site, um, for the plan commissioners, and for the people um, on the Zoom. Certainly, I'd love to do that. I don't know if I'm having technical difficulties. I just see the Travel Center University Park Plan Commission. The first slide, the introductions and stuff like that is. Uh, Excuse me, Sharice Williams, Commissioner Williams speaking. I was going to say the same thing, like everything that he said on the different scenes. I didn't see any of the changes, so none of the. Oh, the I apologize. Control. I'm not. Um, is this the? Am I? Is this better? Or I'm not that adept at screen sharing. I'm, I, uh, it did. It the just slides changed. are changing now. Yeah, there. There now we're at the. There we go. Cool. Okay, so these were the. Forgive me. The other ones weren't as part as important, but this is the. These were the aerial slides and. Here's the site plan. I apologize for that. It's my fault. All right. Going right out, as you know, as you're coming right off the expressway, you'll get a really nice view of this as Dan's slide showed there, that kind of the aerial view of it. Right on the hard corner, you're going to have a, a travel center. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, could you please state your name okay. and your address for the record? Thank you. Certainly. My name is Christian Kalashevsky, spelled K-A-L-I-S-C-H-E-F-S-K-I. -E I'm from WT Group, and we are the architects involved in, in this development. And I am uh, a partner and principal of the firm. And we, again, starting right there at the southwest corner of the site, that will be the travel center, within the travel center itself, there will be three or two or three individual food offerings. We have space for three. We may just start off with two being a Dunkin' Donuts and something like a Jimmy John's, something like that. Uh, then the, of course, we'll have an overall layout of the store, a nice seating area. And we'll actually have trucker amenities here in the terms of uh, separate laundry facilities, separate shower rooms and such. So it will truly be by definition a travel center. So we will be drawing people from the expressway into uh, University Park and creating some uh, nice uh, re retail sales tax dollars. And from the site, the, the long, hor 
horizontal rectangular thing is the auto canopy. And those are, it's a starter gate canopy, which is the safest type of canopy to be used. So it'll be a single row of dispensers, not a double row, but a single row. So you're not fighting through the, the traffic to get to your particular pump. You don't have to go around cars at all. And so with that, uh, you have the single row. So we have the auto in the front at the hard corner, and we purposely separate the truck traffic to be behind the travel center. And that's the vertical rectangle that has um, both a main dispenser and a satellite dispenser because the trucks have gas tanks on both sides. So when, when they're pulling into the uh, CFL lanes, they will actually have um, two pumps technically going, uh, one a satellite off of the main. And so you can see that the, the trucks will be able to fuel. There'll be room behind them for stacking. There's room in front of them to pull up when they're done fueling, if they want to go into the store for a little bit longer. And those that are staying for longer term would make a left and go up to all the parking spots that we have in the hard northwest corner of the site. So we have a complete double rows of parking and then they come around and come back south with additional parking on the very west edge. And so we have a very nice um, offering of parking there. The, the trucks can uh, decide if they wanna have a truck wash that would be a future phase. That's the building just to the right of the CFL and right, right in that area there. And that would be a, a truck uh, where they actually drive the truck through uh, to get it washed. And so a full amenity causing people to want to stay at the site. And so that's the goal here. Quite frankly, quite candidly, the longer you keep people on the site, quite frankly, the more money potentially that they can spend in all the sales tax revenue from that. The building right adjacent to the right of that building is a, um, a low level mechanical building for trucks, such as tire uh, repair, uh, new tire sales, oil and filter changes, not complete transmission and engine overhauls, not, not heavy mechanical like that, but more of the quick turnaround that indeed um, person can get in and change the oil and filter while they need to be off the road anyway. So again, another amenity to keep people at the site. As we go back to the street le level, we have three Outlots for QSRs, Quick Serve Restaurant. That's what the QSR stands for. All of them have the potential for being a drive through. And so that has a wide variety. And again, we'll be drawing people to the site. The building just to the right of the three QSRs is an actual sit down restaurant, similar to like an IHOP type offering. So that would be full parking around, uh, the trucks will be parked in their area, they can walk and sit down and have a, a full served meal, uh, full, full restaurant service at that spot. And then finally, as we go all the way to the east of our site, is we do have a hotel room, a hotel building with um, roughly about 100 rooms, so three stories, and it will be very nicely situated where you have overlooks onto the detention pond, which is that kind of triangular area with a little extension, almost looks like a number four uh, sideways. And that is a detention pond. So that will be lined with trees and, and have the, the grass area. So it'll be a very nice area to look at from the QSRs, from the restaurant, from the hotel, even from the travel center, and even from the, the truck facility. So right kind of in the middle of this development will be a very aesthetically pleasing focal element for the site itself. 
And so that's the overlay of the site layout. If we just quickly go to the elevations, um, and the elevations are, are wanting to be fun and friendly. Uh, the, the name of the building is Speed Trek, the trek being your journey. And we're really um, wanting people to understand that this is part of their journey. And so staying at this uh, spot, eating at this facility is going to be a good enhancement of their overall travel experience. As you can see on the one side of the building, we want to highlight University Park. We Right there, we have an image there of your lake and such. Um, but if there's something else that you would like us to portray on that side of the building, we would be glad to do that. We, as, as uh, Kalpesh Patel uh, from the OM Group, he has many facilities in many communities throughout the country. And he is very much... Uh, favor of being part of the community and enhancing the community, hiring from the community, and just highlighting the, the, the positive aspects of that community. And hence, we would have this kind of mural effect of some of the, um, the things that people should take a look at when they're there at university. There was a drone strike during the scramble to get troops out of the country earlier this year. At the time, the um, attack. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit of back feed from a, a news story. And military says it is changing the way drone strikes are ordered and if, approved. If people don't mind, I'll just keep keep when talking. The no, don't. Can, that one needs to go on mute. Yeah, yeah. yeah. if everybody else can mute except for uh, Jim Fran, please mute as well as Dan Widler. When the dirt, the dirt Those are the only two unmuted. On gun violence program. I think it's coming from the mayor's. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank <laughs> All right. you. So okay, what... sorry. Here, that would be, it would drown you out. And no, you may go ahead. I apologize. Okay. No, thank you for, for doing that. So what we're trying to do with this, but the, the black element is the roadway, depicting an architectural feature, depicting the roadway, your trek and your journey. And then the rest of the building has masonry accents on the right, and then a fun decorative, uh, what's called an illumination series panels of colors that just play off of these uh, speed track gra graphics in terms of their corporate colors and just making a fun play around that building. Uh, this is like a V shape, the black trek comes out so you can actually walk under it and through it as you are by the door. So it's very much of an interplay from when you're at the canopy, you're looking at a very interesting building that wants to draw you in. And that is our biggest challenge to keep people from just not pumping gas and going, but wow, that looks pretty interesting. Let's take a look and see what's inside. And so that's what we're trying to capture with this, with this building. This is all a, a fiberglass reinforced panel. So very hardy panel, very durable, very maintenance free and long lasting. And it holds its color. And that's why we're, we're going with this to, to prevent the, to present a very excellent architectural feature right at the hard corner of the site. And I think, and that flavor of those materials will be sprinkled throughout the, the development itself, especially like the truck wash and, and stuff like that. But of course that's kind of the future phases. But so we're, we're not looking to have a super tall building here. We wanna express kind of the relationship of the customer as they walk up to the building. We want it to be fun, friendly, and inviting. And that's generally the layout of the site and, and the building elevations. Okay, thank you, Chris. Um, uh, next, I'm gonna introduce uh, Jim Frain, who will uh, take us through the basic preliminary engineering plan 
that we have and our proposed preliminary uh, plat for the uh, development. Good afternoon. My name is uh, Jim Frain, F-R-A-Y-N. I'm with Manhard Consulting, M-A-N-H-E-R-D as in dog. Uh, we're located at 700 Springer Drive in Lombard, Illinois. I have a very brief engineering presentation, but would be happy to answer, answer any detailed questions anybody might have. Uh, the site has uh, both sanitary sewer and water provided for on both sides, on Central as well as Dunkel Road. Um, and so those are available and it, the service is provided by Aqua, your, uh, your utility provider. Uh, the site generally drains from northwest to southeast. I'm sorry, northeast to southwest. And um, the, there's storm sewer in this location right now. Our plan is to provide the stormwater management facility behind this row of outlots here. Uh, all the water will be routed into the stormwater detention basin first and then released slowly into the existing storm sewer system. The, uh, that concludes my engineering presentation. The plat, we've uh, created a eight lot uh, subdivision plat with an outlot for the stormwater management facility. That would be uh, a common space. The other lots would be uh, owned by the users of those particular uses. That concludes my plat presentation. Thank you, Jim. Um, so so the the next piece that I just really want to go over, um, we've gone over this briefly, but just to give you an indication, as our architect mentioned, Chris Kalisevsky, we have a uh, Jimmy John's and Dunkin' Donuts um, committed to our travel center right now. We're, walking, we're also working on a Pizza Hut concept um, to do um, Pizza Hut in addition to that as, as an interior restaurant, and we probably would have space for somebody else as well. Uh, we don't have a truck wash or truck repair committed yet, but we've talked to several different users um, for that in addition to that. Um, as you can indicate from sort of my marketing outline here, um, you know, we've talked to Cracker Barrel, Denny's, Golden Corral, um, Wendy's, McDonald's, Sonic, Popeye's, Taco Bell, Arby's, um, Burger King, and we've had good interest, but I think that people are looking to commit um, to the center um, once the center becomes um, probably in the ground next spring and we'll probably be able to identify more users. Um, probably about next six months from now. Along with that, that includes also the hotel. We've talked to a lot of different hotel users, and I think that they're all um, very interested in the site. Um, but they're just they're just waiting um, to get out of the pandemic and um, be in a better position to be able to do their expansion probably 2023, 2024. Um, you know, one of the things I think that we're probably most proud of in terms of in terms of this development for the community, um, and it's both a short term and a longer term, you know, impact is just really the the job impact. Um, you know, we're looking at between full and part time jobs when we're fully built out um, for the different users. We're looking at approximately 300, um, 300 jobs there, many of which, as we talked about earlier, um, we welcome community members to be part of our team in the travel center or any of the restaurants or hotel that we're building. Um, and then in addition to that, when we're under construction, you're looking at probably, you know, for each project, each separate project, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood for the larger sizes, the hotel and the travel center, you know, plus or minus over 200 jobs. And then, you know, probably plus or minus, you know, 50 to 75 jobs for just the QSR um, restaurants. Um, you know, that really concludes sort of um, our presentation um, in terms of the overall development. Um, you know, as we've talked about before, you know, we really think that this is going to be a really great amenity for um, the community 
and as the community continues to expand its commercial um, its commercial base in terms of tax revenue and jobs, it will be a really big generator along with the existing um, industrial users that are already um, part of the um, in Carvana that are part of the Village Park uh, family. Um, and now I would sort of open it up for any kind of discussion or questions. Every member of my team is, you know, available to the extent um, that you want to learn more about what we're proposing. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioners, do you have any questions at this time? Commissioner Danny Seegers. Uh, Dan Wander? Yes, that's me. Yeah. Okay, um, you said if, upon approval of this project, you expect to break ground next spring? Uh, yeah, we're looking at uh, May or June uh, groundbreaking on this project. And first round of completion being? We probably would finish um, the travel center and the gas station part of the development either in the fourth quarter of 2022 or the first quarter of 2023, you know, depending on weather and deliveries of construction items and all those different kinds of things, which are um, getting more scarce um, as we uh, continue to come out of the pandemic. But that's our goal. Thank you. Any other questions? Not for me, ma'am. Sharice Williams, Commissioner Sharice Williams, hello. I would like to go back to the beginning of the presentation, uh, Dan, when we were showing the, 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 the um, slides. If you could just go over the ones that you went over initially that we missed and then just you know hover there for a few so we can sure. actually see what we were talking about? Yes, not a problem. I apologize for that. So this is our, can you see the slide that I have on the screen right now? Yes, yes. That okay. was the best so this was our that. outline. This was our outline. And then this was a little bit about Terraco talking about, you know, the history of Terraco and the kinds of things that we've, um, that we've been able to accomplish um, since in our 35 year history, as I said, I'm one of the principals here um with the company and then this next slide kind of showcases a couple of the different developments that we've done um you know giving you a little bit of uh, depth and breadth of the kinds of things that we've done we've developed really in 14 states but these are all chicago projects we did a trader joe's uh, we did a jewel osco in woodlawn which is down here um, a mixed-use project in logan square with a target and apartments um, in, um, that, that we did um, a few years ago. Um, done a lot of work with Starbucks and um, Walgreens. This is Portillo's um, anchor development in Skokie that we did. Um, and then I really try to give you sort of a little bit of a highlight of some of the things that our partner, the OM group has done. Um, they're really a sort of best in class, kind of what I would consider sort of medium sized family owned business that has really excelled in you know, quick service restaurants with Dunkin' Donuts and Wingstop, Rosati's Pizza, um, Dairy Queen. Um, and then they're, they've done, you know, 60 plus um, gas station developments around the country um, with all the major brands, um, Sunoco, BP. Um, Shell and this at this location here, this will be a Shell branded um, travel center. So you are getting probably the number one fuel brand in the world um, with um, with Shell being part of the uh, part of the equation here. Um, the next thing I had here was to talk about kind of the the vision that we were looking at um, as it relates to the travel center, where it's really got two kind of major phases, um, which is the travel center first, along with truck parking, and, um, and then the commercial part of the development, the hotel and the restaurants that we're also going to be doing. Um, and then I had several slides 
um, that kind of just orientate you from um, from an aerial standpoint, um, where we've got to look at the property in relationship to some of the other um, you know major users that are already in the market um, at that corner. Um, the property as you're looking about it, looking northeast um, to get a good indication about how how much of a prominent corner it is, and why we're so excited about it. And we've got one looking at it from the south. Um, you know, as you can see, it's just got, you know, tremendous kind of street presence there. And then, you know, we, we have it in the back as our last slide here um, showing the property in relationship to the four-way interchange, just to show you that, that um, and this is a real credit to the village and your team, um, that your years of hard work getting this interchange will pay off um, significant dividends, you know, for the users that are already there and to help us with our, you know, full service travel center that we're doing. Um, That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Thank you very much. Now, again, Commissioner Sharice Williams, one last question is, do you have any idea on projected car counts uh, that will be coming through the village and as a result of your project? Um, I will flip that over to my traffic consultant, the way he might be able to give you a little bit more precise numbers than I could on that. Great, thank you. Louie, are you still there? You might be still on mute. Um, I'm sorry, Dan. Well, I, I didn't hear the question. So one of the commissioners wanted to wanted to know what kind of uh, traffic counts we were expecting, um, you know, into the development, you know, both the travel center and then eventually as we were built out the, the restaurants and the hotel. Okay, thank you. Uh, Louie Abuna with KLOA. Um, so in our traffic study, we um, uh, indicated all the uh, trip generation that would be estimated for the, uh, not only the truck stop, but the entirety of the development. Um, and, um, you know, we looked at the weekday morning and weekday evening peak hours. Uh, one thing to note about these kind of facilities, particularly during the rush hour, a lot of the traffic that they generate is drawn from the existing traffic on the roadway system. Uh, so it's not all new trips and that helps obviously uh, to uh, um, uh, reduce the impact on, on, the, on the intersection and on the, as well as the curb cuts. Um, as far as uh, new trips uh, uh, for, the, um, uh, for the truck stop, um, uh, we're looking at uh, somewhere in the range of uh, 200 trips, uh, 150 to 200 trips during the peak hours uh, that would uh, come in and out of the facility. Uh, uh, for the entirety of the development, uh, the amount of new trips that would be generated uh, would range uh, from uh, 350 to 400 uh, trips in and out uh, during the peak hours. Uh, that would be in the morning and, and evening peak hours. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much. One last question. When when we that's that's at the end of after the hotels are built, that's everything. So it's like that would gradually increase as the individuals added on to the project. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. That's for the entirety of the development, all the parcels, including the hotel, restaurants, the truck stop, everything develops. Uh, that's what the projection uh, uh, would be. That's great. Okay. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Wonderful presentation. Really appreciate you. And thank you for coming and joining the uh, family here in the North Sea Park. Okay. Commissioners, is that the last question? Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is Commissioner Towns. I just thought of something. Uh, if you go uh, about a half mile or a mile south, to the two truck stops that are in that particular area, there are some uh, obstructions uh, as far as crossing the road and then back onto the expressway. Will uh, you guys experience any of those obstructions? Uh, 
Hello? Uh, no, uh, no, Commissioner, we don't anticipate. Um, we are going to have much better, I think, access at this site than the stuff that's located in LA because this is more of a modern, new intersection in terms of where we're at. Um, and the amount of traffic that's currently on the road and that will be proposed on the road based on where we're at, we should be able to have good free flow of traffic, especially with the new um, new signal um, that's at the corner. All right, thank you. Inspector Belgrave here. Good afternoon, everyone. About one question. Was this uh, traffic study done in conjunction with IDOT? Um, the, this traffic study was done uh, in accordance with IDOT's um, uh, requirements, that's correct. More questions? Was that, I'm sorry, was that um, study, I didn't see it with the, um, I don't believe it was in the packet. So um, we didn't get a chance to see it. So that's probably why those questions are coming up. Any more questions? Okay, hearing none. Is there a motion? We have actually four items. I'm sorry. Uh, Vernita, was there is was any public comment submitted, or was anybody on the line for? You know what? I I'm sorry. I I'm sorry. I did write that down to ask that question. Um, no, there were no public comments forwarded to me um, prior to the meeting, and there is no one on the. Um, call um, from the public. So I do apologize for that. I did write that down to say, <laughs> thank you. Okay, so um, with that said, um, is there a motion? We have four uh, motions before us. So the first. The first. Oh, the yeah, first. <laughs> The first motion is to approve the site development plan. Mr. Is there a motion? Motion to move to approve the site development plan. Can we just, I can't, I, because the screen share is up, I can't tell who's talking. Okay. Because it, it won't follow the thing quick enough sometimes. So if we could, I I'll don't know say my name. Up. I'll say my, I'll say my name. No, I, I can, I, I know your voice now, but the other ones. Just Thank you. Okay, now I can now be able to see who's talking. Hopefully. Okay. So I'm gonna do the. I'm gonna start over. Um, is there a motion to approve the site development plan? Commissioner Sharice Williams moved to approve the initial site plan. Is there a second? Commissioner Danny Seegers, second. Commissioner Antonio Towns, a third. Not, okay, only we only need two. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so <laughs> the motion has been um, <laughs> raised and seconded, has been uh, raised by um, Commissioner Cerise Williams and seconded by Commissioner Danny Seegers. Um, we're going to do a roll call. Commissioner Sharice Williams. Both okay. aye. Commissioner Danny Seegers. Both okay. aye. Commissioner Antonio Towns. Both okay. aye. Commissioner Vernita Martin. Both okay. aye. The um, plan commission has. Um, is making a recommendation before the Board of Trustees to approve the site development plan. Uh, the motion has been raised, approved, seconded, and it has um, passed. 
Um, the next one is to subdivide the parcel of land, the subject par um, property located at the northeast corner of Stunkel Road and Stunkel Road and Central, Central Avenue and Stunkel Road. Is there a motion? Commissioner Sharice Williams, motion to subdivide the partial land with Stunkel Road and the other part that she said that I couldn't I hear. <laughs> but the subject. Thank you. Okay. Is there a second? Okay, which one? I told you, tells I second it. Okay, roll call. Commissioner Sharice Williams, both I. Commissioner Anthony Towns, Antonio Towns, I'm sorry. Both I. Commissioner Danny Seegers. Votes aye. Commissioner Renita Martin. Votes aye. So the motion has passed to, a sub, to approve and make a recommendation to the Board of Trustees to subdivide the partial land for the subject property located at the northeast corner of Central Avenue and Stunkel Road. Item number three. Is there a motion to zone the subject property on the zoning code I for industrial district? Commissioner Sharif Williams, motion to zone commercial property for I for industrial district, please and thank you. And I'm sorry, and that is under subsection 1260 of the zoning code. Let me just make sure I have the right zoning code. And, I do apologize. And Vernita, that, that uh the, the, the subject property is currently located in what district? Um I do believe that it is un I do believe right now, if you can look at the zoning map, it is undetermined. So we're zoning it under industrial I and that's 1260. I'm just looking for my um I have so many papers right here. I'm just looking for it. The industrial. Yeah, it is 1260. Yep. Yeah, so, that's it. So for clarification, this is a motion to approve the rezoning of the subject property from undetermined to uh, the industrial district pursuant to chapter 1260. Yes, thank you. Please amend my motion to let attorney Michael Costello save it. Thank you. Is there a second? I second. Commissioner Danny. There you go. Okay, the motion has been raised by Commissioner Sharice Williams. It has been seconded by Commissioner um, Antonio Towns. Roll call. Commissioner Danny Seegers. Both I. Commissioner Sharice Williams. Both Commissioner Antonio, did I say Antonio Towns? I'm sorry. Yeah, I Are think I did. And Antonio uh, Commissioner Towns. Antonio Towns. Both side. Commissioner Bernita Martin, both side. So the motion has passed. The plan commission um, makes a recommendation before the board of trustees to um, rezone the subject property from undetermined to um, industrial I-1260 of the zoning code. The last motion is to approve the special use permit under section 1260-04, number two, subsection two, for automobile <coughs> service station and for four hotels. Is there a motion? Commissioner Sharice Williams, move to approve. I didn't catch all that. Could you repeat that? Commissioner yeah. Danny Seeger, second. After, she has to raise the motion. 
I'm I'm trying. Uh, uh, no, uh, I'm sorry. For clarification, uh, could you please repeat so that we can get yep, the yep. Right motion? Okay. Is there a motion to approve a special use permit under section 1260-04, a special use um, section number two, automobile service, I'm sorry, and section four for hot hotels for the subject property? That is correct. Thank, thank you for the correction for the amending of my motion. Is there a can second? Like that, attorney? Attorney Costeldo. Yeah, so just it's a it's a motion um, to approve the special use permit um, pursuant to, to 1260 04 A2 automobile service station and 1260 04 A4 hotels. So there's two special uses being approved currently. Yes. Thank you. And that's and and someone can make that motion. That, I was making that motion. I needed your clarity. Thank you so much. I just we just need a second now. Is there a second? Antonio Towns, I second. Okay. The motion has been raised and seconded by um, by has been raised by Commissioner Sharice Williams and seconded by Commissioner Antonio Towns. Roll call. Commissioner Danny Seegers. Both aye. Commissioner Sharice Williams. Both aye. Commissioner Antonio Towns. Both aye. Commissioner Bernita Martin. Both aye. The motion has um, passed, and the um, plan commission will make a recommendation to the board of trustees. <coughs> the special use permit under section 1260-04 subsection 8 number 2 automobile service station and number 4 for hotels any questions okay. I would like to thank you all all the petitioners for um, joining us tonight um, it has been our pleasure um, listening to your presentation and um, we look forward to um, our recommendations going forward to the Board of Trustees and upon their approval, um, hopefully a great um, partnership. Um, with that said, uh, it is approximately 4.55 PM. And I would like to um, motion or have a motion to adjourn the meet. Nope. Yep. Nope. 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 Not nope. to adjourn. I'm sorry, because there's one more thing on the agenda. Want to say just say thank you um, all for coming out. Thank you so much. You're thank so you. welcome. Appreciate thank it. You. Thank you, guys. Goodbye. Thank you all for coming. God bless. Good night. You too. Thank, thank you. you for your time. Uh, did we adjourn the meeting? Uh, no, yeah. we did not. No, I'm sorry. I had to call that back because I forgot there's one more thing on the agenda. Okay, so um, Miss Neva. I'm here. Okay. Um, has everyone left other than um, the commissioners, the attorney and um, village representation and um, the court reporter. Um, yes, that is correct. Okay. okay, great. Okay, so we're gonna move on to our next item on the agenda. And that is um, our petitioner, progressive housing, uh, progressive, housing they re requested an extension and a revision of their formal request so at this time um what we need is a motion to um allow help me um attorney to allow uh, the petitioner to um you're gonna just continue it to the january meeting 
Okay, we're gonna continue with, okay. Okay, so then that means we do not adjourn. Um, so we will reconvene this meeting at our January meeting, which is January the, what is that? And, and I guess just for uh, the, the purpose of the record, you can uh, make a motion to con continue uh, this item to the January meeting. Yeah. And then before you adjourn, just yeah. please note that there's no okay, so public comment. Okay. Okay, right. There's an, at this time, there's no public comment um, that was given to me prior to the meeting. And um, there's no one for this petitioner at this time to speak. So is there a motion to um, table this item on the agenda to the January? And I'm looking for the date. Mm -hmm. January. Um, is that, Jan what is that? The second Tuesday, the second Wednesday, January 12th. It looks like. Commissioner Sharice Williams, I motion to table this meeting until the next meeting uh, scheduled. January, January 12, 2022. Yes. Is there a second? Antonio Town seconds it. Okay. So the motion um, has been raised to table um, item two on the agenda till our next meeting, till we reconvene at our next meeting on January the 12th, 2020 at 7 p.m. Roll call. Commissioner Sharice Williams. Commissioner Sharice Williams, both aye. Commissioner Danny Seegers. Commissioner Danny Seegers, both aye. Commissioner Antonio Towns. Commissioner Antonio Town votes aye. Commissioner Renita Martin, aye. So the motion has passed um, to table the item number two on the agenda till the next um, plan commission meeting, which is Wednesday, January the 12th at 7 p.m. Thank you all. Any, um, before we adjourn, is there anything else? I'm sorry, did you say January the 12th? I, yep, 2020, 2020. Oh no, you know what, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm in 21, I need to be in 22. Oh, that is 22, that is yeah, 22, yeah. Yep. January 12th, 2022 is good. Yeah, that is 2022, yep. That and what was the good. time again? 7 p.m. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Any questions? No, ma'am. Hearing none. I will, we will recess until January 12th, 2022 at 7 p.m. Everyone have a great evening. And Attorney Costaldo, I'm getting ready to call you on your phone.